So the first thing to know when uh, when you study the introduction to continuum mechanics is how we describe a continuum. And the one tool that we use to uh, represent a continuum is the set of real numbers. Now, we, we, we don't have to go uh, deeply into the study uh, of real numbers, but you should, on your spare time, read the Wikipedia article on real numbers. So real numbers is what uh, engineers and mathematicians use to describe a continuum. So if I have a line, what um, allows me to define this line mathematically is the real numbers. And the properties of the real numbers are such that between every two real numbers, there is another real number. And so between this real number and this real number, there is another real number. And so by using the real numbers, I'm able to define a continuum, or basically I can define a line, and I can define another line, and by defining those two lines, I can define a space, and so on. But the basic, basic tool or element is the real number. Now, we need to understand some properties of the real numbers because they apply to any other space. The first property is that R, or the set of real numbers, is closed under addition. What does it mean? It means if I have a real number and then I add another real number, I'm gonna get an I'm gonna get a result which is also a real number. Basically any real number that you add to another real number, you're gonna get a result that's always a real number and that's why we say that the real numbers are closed under addition basically any two you add them up you get real numbers another important property of the real numbers is that it has a zero element what does it mean that it has a zero element there is an element that when you add it to any real number you get that same real number without any change so if I add root pi to the zero element, I get root pi. Now this is important because when we study vectors, vectors also have zero elements or zero vectors, which we will see in a short while. Another important thing is that every element in the real numbers has an inverse element of addition. Negative two is the inverse element of addition of 2 because when you add negative 2 to 2 you get 0 negative 3 is the inverse element of addition of 3 when you add negative 3 to 3 you get 0 negative root pi is the inverse element of addition of root pi when you add them to each other you get 0 root 2 is the inverse element of addition of negative root 2. When you add them together, you get 0. This is similar to what you're going to see in vectors. Also, r is closed under multiplication. If you get any real number and you multiply it by another real number, you are going to get a real number. This is what it means that R is closed under multiplication. Now there are some symbols that are used throughout the course. These mathematical symbols, you need to uh, study them and understand what they mean because that's how we're going to communicate throughout the class by using those symbols to explain uh, our statements. The first symbol is the set of real numbers. So R is the set of real numbers that we all, of course, know what it is. It's the open interval from uh, 
negative infinity to infinity and I sometimes utilize this open bracket which is also equivalent to this bracket as well so it depends on how you studied it in your high school it could be the open bracket or this bracket the second symbol is the set of natural numbers this is the set that has one two three four and so on the curly brackets are used to define sets of elements so a if I tell you that A is a set, then I'm going to have an open bracket, put the elements of that set, and then close the curly bracket once I put all the elements. This symbol defines element of or belongs to. So if this is A, if this is the set A, then I can say that the element 3 is an element of the set A or I can say that 1 is an element of the set A. Another symbol that will be used throughout is for every. Given that A is equal to the set of 1, 2 and 3 I can simply say that any element in A satisfies that it's greater than zero. So this statement, again I'm going to repeat it, that for every element in A, for every x belongs to A, x has to be greater or x is greater than zero. If I give you the set that's equal to 1, 2, 3, let's say negative 1. Well, I can't use A again because I already used it. So let's say B is equal to 1, 2, 3, negative 1. I can state that there is an element in B. And this element is less than 0. So this symbol means there exists in fact there exists a unique element in B and this element is less than 0 it's unique because that's the only element in B that's less than 0 we only have one element in B that's less than 0 so when you put the exclamation mark after there exists it implies uniqueness subset of now I have set a I define it as the elements 1 2 3 I define the set B as 1 2 3 and negative 1 I can state that a is a subset of B now do not confuse subset and element of two set one set is a subset of another set but one element is an element of a set The next symbols that we're going to describe is the arrow without a tail and the arrow with a tail. These arrows are used to define functions between sets. So for example, if I have a set A that has a few elements, And a set B that has a few other elements. I can define a function f that takes from E from A for every element in E gives me another element in B. So we write it like this: f is a function defined from A to B example so for example the function f of x 
is equal to x squared, this function is defined from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. So for every, fun for every x, there is a real number. This function maps it to x squared. That is also a real number. The next is the mapping arrow but with a tail. This is used to define functions from elements that map elements to elements. So f is defined such that it maps every element in R into another element x squared in R. So when I'm using elements of the set, I'm using the arrow, this uh, for form of the arrow, of the mapping arrow. The next set of, the, the next symbol that we should learn is the set of order pairs of two sets, A cross B. If I have a set A that has, for example, the elements A, B, and C, and I have a set, if I have a set capital B, members 1, 2, and 3, then the set of ordered pairs is equal to the set whose elements are the ordered pairs from A and from B. So A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, and C3. ST is used for such that. Now, throughout the um, course, we're going to define operations. And when we define operations on sets, they're going to take this form. So, for example, uh, this definition states that the positive operation or the addition operation, indicated with plus, is defined on the set of ordered pairs x cross x and maps every element of on, on the set to the set x. So for example, plus or the addition operation is defined on r cross r and the result is in R. So for every two elements in R, x plus y is also in R. The next uh, three symbols are equivalent leads to an x and the definition of a set with a certain property. So I'm going to go through these uh, right here. So to define equivalence between two sets, you use this symbol or th this arrow. So statement A. and statement B. This means statement A 
and statement B are equivalent. For example, A is equal to one, two, three, four. This is equivalent to saying that the set A is equal to the set of natural numbers. we only use the arrow one-sided arrow this means that statement A leads to statement B but not vice versa so statement A leads to statement B but not vice versa not necessarily vice versa so for example I can say that equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This leads to the statement that for every x in A, x is greater than 0. The last uh, symbol that we're going to use or this uh, mathematical notation that we're going to use is sometimes we're going to define sets using properties for example if I say that A or let's say the set C is equal to X where X is a real number and X is between 1 and 0 that tells me that the set C contains all the elements X that satisfy this property. This is equivalent to saying that C is equal to the closed interval 0 to 1. And this is it for the mathematical symbols that we're going to use. And now we're going to start the section on linear vector spaces. Mm -hmm.